Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Joe Pryor with the Virtual Real Estate Team, and this is going to be a couple of videos on an important part of real estate investing, and it's how you're going to finance it. Uh, and so we're going to go into uh, all aspects of this. The first thing is, is the most used type of financing, which is called Fannie Mae, uh, Freddie Mac, uh, but Fannie Mae is what we normally associate it with. There's rules and regulations for it. We're going to go into that, you know, and kind of give you a detail. Now, one of the things that I think is really great about Fannie Mae financing, and this is only when rates are low, is, you know, a 15% down payment. So, you know, I've talked to people, I normally recommend 20% down or more, but you know, the thing is some people say, look, I've got X number of dollars, got $200,000. Uh, this is what I got to put into real estate. And so if I put down less money, then, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be able to buy that one extra property. And, you know, I understand that that's okay. Uh, however, if you do a 15% down, there's mortgage insurance. And, you know, that can say run $85 or more per month uh, because you've got to get a private mortgage insurer. In other words, Fannie Mae says, you know, if you don't put 20% down, we're, we got to be secure. And so this goes for five years. So the good news is that it lops off after five years. You've got 25 years without it, but it's going to affect your cash flow. Now, at the time of this recording, we have some pretty high rates. I mean, the Fed has raised in one year the rates 11 different times, and this does affect mortgage backed securities. So I don't really have anybody using 15% at this point. But most people expect the rates to go down pretty strongly in 2025. Be lucky if there's anything that happens in 2024 at this point. But at some point in the future, especially if you're buying over the next five or 10 years or 15 years or whatever, this is something that works when rates are low and that you can afford maybe some negative cash flow or not get the cash flow you wanted for the first five years. Maybe you're thinking long term and that's okay and understand that less equity means more risk. More money you put down, obviously, the less risk you have. And it can be a plan for negative cash flow. And if that's something that's unacceptable, then you're not gonna do it. But it's something that we will discuss. When rates go down another 2%, which I think that they will at some point, then we'll put this back on the table and see if it works for you. So 20% down, this is pretty standardized. Uh, then most investors that I deal with that are buying a $200,000, $300,000 property, for instance, uh, or a $400,000 duplex, well, I'm sorry, I need to back that off. Only in single family can you do the 20% down because multifamily, two to four units is 25 on Fannie, but 20% down, there's no mortgage insurance. In other words, you're an acceptable risk to Fannie Mae. Now, if you've done FHA or VA loans for your personal loans, or the houses that you're living in, understand that even with 20% down, it's a little tighter on the ratios. In other words, they're, they're not gonna give you as much leeway in terms of your total debt, but it's not terrible. So it's one thing that's really, really different. And so if you deal with most major companies that are in the real estate business, giving out mortgages, they're all gonna do this. They're all gonna do 20% down. A lot of them will do the 15. And then no mortgage insurance helps your cash flow and there's less risk. In other words, let me explain something a little bit about mortgage companies. They're gonna package your loan, all right, and sell it. You know, whoever you start with is not necessarily who you end with. It can be sold three or four times. Now, sometimes they'll keep the servicing where you think that you're dealing with Bank of America or whoever it happens to be, but they've sold the back end to someone else. And so the thing about the 20% down is for them, that gives them less risk on their end. It's not huge. It's not as important as your credit report and you know your ratios on your debt to income. And but it's something that you know gives them a little bit more leeway. And again, more equity means less downside. Now, because rates are higher as we're doing this class, we're seeing lower rates on 25 and 30% down. So every week or whenever rates change, and normally it's once a week, can be more, uh, we get the 20% down rate plus the 25 plus the 30 because it can make a real difference in terms of 
you know, what what the rates are and what it makes a difference in terms of your buying power, what the cash flow is going to be. And so the, the lenders really like these, okay? They really prefer these. So a lot right now of investors I'm working with are doing 25% down. Now, the other thing is the more money you put down, the less your principal and interest are going to be, correct? And so therefore the better cash flow that you're going to get. And so we're definitely, even in most situations, we're in a good positive cash flow range, especially at 30% down, something to consider. So let's say you're buying a $300,000 property. The seller, according to Fannie Mae guidelines, can pay up to 2% for your closing cost. So that 2% doesn't have to go to all those other things, you know, your insurance, your appraisal, and the title insurance things that are normally things that you pay, but it can go to what's called an interest rate buy down. Let me explain. Let's say rates are at a par rate. That's no points, no origination. And so this is the rate that they can give you with the least amount of money out of your pocket. Well, it's 7%, let's say. But you now have $6,000 from the seller uh, that they're going to give you to use whatever way that you want. So let's say that you have a, you know, you're putting a lot of money down and you have a $220,000 loan. Well, you know, here's the thing. The 2% is based on the purchase price. That's $300,000. The points to buy down are based on what your debt is at 220. So let's say you're doing a 3% interest rate buy down. That's three points, not 3%. And so, you know, that's $6,600. So they're giving you six. You can take $600 and maybe that goes down to six or six and a quarter. Makes a huge difference. So one of the things that we're telling our investors right now, understand that you're gonna get these rates as of that day when you lock, but you have these buy down points. And the lender is going to explain this to you even more. So this is a really good thing. This is something that you need to consider. And even if rates go down to five and a half, five and a quarter, you might be able to get it down to 4.25 or 4% with points. So it's a great way of using the seller's money that they can contribute to you and make your life a whole lot easier with an extra cash flow. So, you know, the other thing is you can use this to buy up to a quadruplex. It's the picture of a duplex that I sold, for instance, the drawing of it. So two, three or four units can be considered an investment property with Fannie Mae. You got to put 25% down. But again, we have a lot of people that are diversifying with single family and small multifamily. So this is one thing that you can do. So why is this the preferred method? Well, again, the majority of lenders want to do this. They want a Fannie Mae back loan. It helps them to sell them on, it's sold in the secondary market. And so a lender, it's a big deal to a lender. So they want to do this. And they're going to be the lowest kind of rates of what I'm discussing at this point. And you can do 10 to 20 loans. So let's say you're a family, a couple, and with only one person earning money. Well, you're going to be limited to 10 total mortgages. And that when I say 10 mortgages, that's, you know, if you have a, a primary home and a secondary home, for instance, that's two mortgages. And then you have eight more properties you can buy of investment properties. I have investors out in California that the house is so expensive, they put all their money into investment properties in other areas that are affordable. And so they can have 10 mortgages. Now, the duplex to quadruplex is one mortgage. It's not counted by the doors. So that is a question. So it's mortgages only. Now I deal with people that both people, both husband and wife are earning a lot of money. Now you can do 10 loans to one, 10 loans to the other. It gives you the ability of getting this better financing and it's going to be up to 20 loans at that point. Now, one caveat, I want you to know is after you go to about four mortgages, then things start tightening up a little bit on qualifying. But remember that you've got assets, you've got income. It's going to make a real difference in that particular respect. So I'm going to stop there, you know, because we're at almost 10 minutes here. I don't want to go too much into this where you can kind of absorb one thing at a time. So now the next question is, if you're over the 10 or 20 limit, what do I do if I want to buy more? If I'm buying something like a fix and flip, for instance, or an apartment complex or whatever it happens to be, 
what do I do? And that is what's called the non-conforming conventional loan. We're going to go into that next. So stay tuned. A lot more financing to come.